welcome. I'm Harriet Agbini. Tonight, former Chief Justice of the Federation joins calls for decentralization of resource control, says it's time to address injustices committed on all sides. Four residents in the Yesheri area of Lagos kidnapped as three kidnapped oil workers in River State escape captivity. Center for Geodesy and Geodynamics confirms earth movement in Kwaikarina State was an earthquake. And tens of thousands protest in cities across Germany against a planned transatlantic trade deal between the EU and the US. And on business news tonight, ahead of crucial MPC meeting next week, market analysts expect committee to maintain key rates at current levels. And on sports news, federal government plans grand reception for Team Nigeria athletes after a successful outing at this year's Paralympic Games in Rio. There may be disagreement on terminologies used, but the call for think thinkering with the structure of the Nigerian Federation appears to be gaining support by the day. The latest is from a former Chief Justice of the Federation, Dahiru Mustafa, who has advocated the decentralization of aspects of government, especially in the areas of resource management. According to him, Nigerians must be brave in addressing the grievances and injustices committed on all sides. The occasion is a lecture to mark the 75th birthday of Chief Alani Bankole, father of the former Speaker of the House of Representatives, Dimeji Bankole. Again, the question of Nigeria's unity comes to the fore as dignitaries, including serving and former state governors, lawmakers, and traditional rulers, listen. Bears his mind on the need to change some things in the system. We need to decentralize several aspects of government, especially in areas of resource management. The current federal appropriation system has spread latent laziness across many states to explore economic opportunities beyond oil. On the current dwindling economic situation, Justice Dahiru prescribes the decentralization of government's responsibilities. Our agricultural sector has suffered tremendously, and the Nigerian industries are no longer competent. We must encourage all states to seek new and diverse avenues for economic transformation, taking advantage of the human capital resources located in their states and attract talent from other Nigerian states. For the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Honorable Yakubu Dogara, the unity of Nigeria should be non-negotiable. In this present world where everyone is talking about globalization, nations are even surrendering parts of their sovereignty so that they can form a more prosperous union. It will be disheartening if the discussion in this country is centered about dismemberment of the nation Nigeria. I can say this without any fear of contradiction. There is no part of this nation, no section of this nation that will ever be greater than Nigeria if we can build a united and better Nigeria. As these eminent Nigerians increase the call for national unity and cohesion, they insist that all citizens must now play their own part for the country to be great again. Members of the Islamic Movement of Nigeria have taken their protest to Kanu State in Nigeria's northwest region. Once again, they're asking for the release of their leader, Sheikh Ibrahim Zagzaki, who was arrested by soldiers. Sheikh Zagzaki was arrested after a clash between security operatives and members of the religious group, also known as Shiites, in 2015. The protesters are also alleging that their leader's health is failing. Just like they did in Kaduna one week ago, the Shiites take over the streets of Kano State, northwest Nigeria. Free our leader! Free our leader! 
Once again, the protesters are asking for the release of their leader, Sheikh Ibrahim Zagzaki. The essence of this procession is to, is to call upon the federal government to, to unconditionally re release our leader, Sheikh Ibrahim Zazaki, and the rest of the members of the Islamic movement. That's why we, 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 are, we come out. We continue to demonstrate. Eh? We continue to demonstrate it. We are intelligent. We are educated people. So we follow the normal procedure of demanding, of getting the right. The group is also claiming that Sheikh Dazaki's health continues to deteriorate in detention. Our main demand is that the government should free Sheikh Ibrahim Zazaki unconditionally, without any condition. They should free him in order to seek medical attention. And his wife too, together with him, she also needs medical attention because she has been shot several times by the soldiers. And also they should release all our brothers that are in custody. And some of our brothers and sisters too are missing since from that day. We want to know about their whereabouts. About. We don't know where they are, so we want the government to tell us where they are. El Zagzaki, his wife, and several members of this movement have been detained since December 2015 after the group clashed with the Nigerian army in Zaria, Kaduna State. The increase in the proliferation of small arms and light weapons in Plateau State, north central Nigeria, is a major concern to the special task force, Operation Safe Haven. To check this, the task force has put strategies in place to mop up such weapons within the state. While parading suspects at the operations headquarters in Jos, commander of the task force, Major General Rogers Nicholas, said the proliferation of such weapons is a threat to the peace which has been enjoyed presently. Thirteen suspects are on parade at the Operation Safe Haven headquarters in Joss Plateau State for various offences ranging from unlawful possession of firearms, armed robbery and cash snatching, as well as buying and selling of hard drugs. Six suspected members of an armed robbery gang are reported to have been apprehended in Lantan, southern part of the state, while a syndicate that allegedly specializes in the business of hard drugs were also arrested by officers of the task force during routine operations. From what you can see, you've seen one or two rifles. What we're going to do is to profile these ones through uh, extra uh, interrogations, then we'll hand them over to the Nigerian police for prosecution. There have been complaints that at times these criminals, when you hand them over to the other security agencies, they are released and nothing is done, and then they come back after them again. We want to show these people to the general public to see them and know that, well, it is now beyond the Nigerian. If they are released by the court, it's no longer the responsibility of the Nigerian army. As, as, as is to make arrests, profile them, then hand over to the necessary uh, security agency that will further deal with the situation. According to General Nicholas, inter-agency collaboration between the task force and other security agencies has been yielding positive results in the fight against crime. These guys are domiciled with the local communities. They work there, they know them. They threaten the local communities, but give us information. You can come to any of our checkpoints and drop your information. Nobody knows. We we'll pick it up, read it, and follow up. You don't have to come and expose yourself to danger. Because if they know you are the one, they come after you. Just secretly write whatever information you have, drop it at any of our checkpoints, we we'll follow it up. Okay? We, we, really are, we are really going to protect your interests. We assure you that the information will not be developed to any other person. The commander wants a review of the Criminal Justice Administration, which he believes has been an impediment in dispensing justice as it concerns various arrests made by the task force. The Nigerian police have had serious problems, okay, going to the courts and then prosecuting them, and then by the end of the day they are released. It's not completely the fault of the Nigerian police, it's just the issue of the criminal justice system that's a bit weak. So we're appealing to the necessary agencies that are responsible to see how they can tighten up the criminal justice system so that criminals cannot be escaping all these things. With the efforts of the Special Task Force in maintaining law and order, the military is appealing to Nigerians to complement these efforts by providing necessary information to security agencies. Still talking security, four men have been reported kidnapped in Isheri North, a border town between Lagos and Ogun states. The men are said to have been kidnapped during an aerobic session in the early hours of today. An eyewitness says the three kidnappers were all armed and masked and came in from the waterside. The police have confirmed the incident and gave the assurance that officers and men from Ogun and Lagos State are working on rescuing the victims and arresting the criminals.
I see one person. He cover his head, only his eye, you go see. He just come out from that bush, this bush, this side. He just come out. He tell him, brothers, say, Mokuna come out, Mokuna come out, they don't come, they don't come. When they come out outside, me, I just, they come, they come. The one, one you know, them be two, then get gone. One, you know, get gone. That's the three. I just, they see them, then they run, come inside like this. The two, another two, then they for that after this container, just come out from that side. And this, uh, or guard them uh, every Saturday, and they come and do exercise here for this area. I actually planned that after the jogging, I have one or two places to go to. So I said, let me be among the, uh, the early risers. So when we got there, the instructor was already there, and um, we were standing, you know, on the straight line, just on this same road. So before we really know what is happening, I think maybe about four or five, I'm not 100% sure, because, you know, the whole thing happened just suddenly. They came out with guns, this uh, AKA, and they said, move, don't move. If you move, we shoot. So it was God. I think I, I, I just ran. And then um, two other guys too, they ran with me. We started running. So we ran towards the, the swamp area. Now went inside one dirty water that is almost about um, six, five to six feet. So we now use some grasses to cover ourselves and hid ourselves at that side. So fortunately, you know, people already, you know, I think they've started calling the police. Before we know, uh, Isheri police uh, people, they came in and um, we now came out of that um, bush. In the meantime, three of 14 oil workers kidnapped along Omoko Elele Road on September the 2nd escaped from their abductors in the early hours of today. Four of the victims had earlier escaped, leaving the number of those still in captivity at seven. Speaking to channels television in Port Akut, two of the escaped victims said the constant movement by the kidnappers gave them a chance to escape. As we are coming from time of, as you said, just reaching a, a pothole, about four men just surrounded us from, from the bush with a gun, with a gun, different types of uh, gun. As we are saying, they opened the door and diverted us to unknown, unknown destination. On reaching a thick forest, they pushed the vehicle and pulled us, pull, pull all our, our shirts and using the singlet, used the singlet to tie, to tie us by the, by the side of, our, of the bush. I even uh, blindfold us, then matched us to unknown destination. As we are going, that's how they were also beating us. They put us in a single fire, so of which the line is long. And, and that particular area was so swampy. So on the long line, and I watched my back, I saw that the, uh, one, some of them behind me was not focusing. So and my colleague was also close to me. So by the time I had slight opportunity, I sank inside the water and shift away from the rule of line. So before we knew it, they passed. When I got up from the water, saw them uh, ahead of me. So we took advantage of that and maneuver. A few hours from now, the president is expected to arrive in New York, where he will join other world leaders for the 71st General Assembly of the United Nations. President Muhammad Buhari will participate in the five-day event and will deliver Nigeria's statement at the opening of the general debate. The theme of this year's debate is the, unsustainable de the Sustainable Development Goals, a universal push to transform our world. On the sidelines of the annual gathering, the President of the United States, Barack Obama, will meet with President Muhammad Buhari as well as leaders of Iraq and Colombia. In part two after the break, troops of the Nigerian army arrest high militant leader in Calabar, Cross River State. Join us again.